What's going on guys, it's Tracker707 and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to install a Loopy DS capture card into a Nintendo DS. This mod will not work on a DS Lite or a DSi, just the original Nintendo DS. If you guys do decide to do this mod, do it at your own risk. I'm not responsible if you guys mess up or anything, so just be careful. The links for everything that I use will be down in the description so you guys can check it out. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And leave a comment down below too if you want to. And let's get started with the video. The first thing you're going to need is a Nintendo DS. This cannot be a DS Lite or a DSi, it has to be at the original Nintendo DS. The next thing you'll need is a loopy capture cardboard and the ribbon cable. I'll leave the link in the description where you can get this. And I paid like the two extra dollars to get the USB-C cable. The next thing is a screwdriver of some sort. I use the, I think it's the Mako iFixit kit. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And then the bits you will need for this project are the Phillips double zero bit and then the Y zero bit. To get started we need to disassemble the DS. So the first step we need to do is take our Phillips head bit and take off the battery cover and then remove the battery. Then you need to switch to the Y0 bit and remove the 7 screws that are around the DS. Then just take the back of the DS shell off. You can see it's a little trickier for me here because I have a USB-C mod installed to my DS. Um, I'll be making a video on how to do that in the future. But if you have one of these installed, you'll just want to take a flathead screw or something so you can just gently pry up because it's a pretty tight fit. If not though, it will be really easy. You can just pull it off. Next, you need to switch back to your Phillips bit and remove the four screws that are on the motherboard. You can see one of the screws is hidden by my controller mod. A link to a video is in the description if you want to check out how to do that. But if you have this installed, you'll just have to lift up on the board and unscrew the screw. Next, we need to remove the ribbon cables. To do that, you lift up on the little plastic flap thingy and you pull the ribbon cable out straight. For some reason on this DS specifically, they're really tricky to get out. So be gentle with them, but you'll, you might have to pull kind of hard. Then for the next ones, you need to, uh, again, pull forward the little plastic flap thingies, I used just a pair of tweezers, and then pull out gently on the ribbon cable. Next, because it's easier to just maneuver everything around and take out the ribbon cables, I would remove the L and R buttons and the springs, make sure don't lose the springs. But just flip up the little plastic thing again and then pull out the ribbon cable. Once you're done with that, you can remove the Wi-Fi cable and lift the board out of the shell. Next, we need to prep the shell so we can trim it some. To fit the board in the USB-C spot, we need to cut the shell with like a Dremel or 
whatever you like to use. Dremel's what I use. It was my first time using a Dremel, so it wasn't the cleanest. But you just need to cut a spot for the USB hole and cut down some plastic. The guide, official guide for this by Loopy himself will be down in the description. It will show you all you'll need to trim. You can see here that I cut away the spot for the USB hole and then also uh, trimmed down the plastic on the inside for the board to fit. Like I said, I didn't do the best job because it's my first time using a Dremel, but it should work just fine. This next step you will only have to do if you have a controller mod installed to your DS, but because the way the capture card gets its ground, it's on the same point as the controller mod, so you will need to remove the ground wire. Um, you can resolder it back on afterwards, I'll show that. But I also moved um, the A and select wires, just so they were out of the way as I soldered. Because I'm going to have the capture card soldered here and the ground wire for my controller mod, I'm just adding some more solder to this point so there will be enough for the wire and the ribbon cable. If you do not have a controller mod installed or don't plan on installing a controller mod, then you can just skip this. Next you want to take your ribbon cable and line it up with all the solder points on the board. It should like fit into place because of the bumps of solder on the test points, but then you want to just tape it in place so it doesn't move on you while you're soldering. Next, hold the ribbon cable to the board with some tweezers so it doesn't move on you, and solder down your first point. Then you just want to continue going one by one soldering down each point. You don't need to add solder to each point, most of them will have enough, but if you are having troubles with it connecting correctly or weird signal, I would add just a little bit to make sure there was a good connection between the ribbon cable and the DS motherboard. Next, you need to fold over the ribbon cable at like the little spot it shows on it and solder the points to LDG3 and LDG5. You'll be able to see where I solder them to and then they're labeled on the board. If you have the controller mod installed, I recommend going under the wires like I did because you don't want too much like pushing out. Next, if you have the controller mod, you need to take the ground wire and solder that back down to the ground point. Make sure before you finish, you solder back down the A and select wire to their point. Now, we can start reassembling the DS. First, take the DS motherboard and carefully shade the ribbon cables through the hole. Next, make sure your Wi-Fi antenna and any of the ribbon cables aren't trapped under the board and screw the four screws back down.
Once the board screwed back in place, reattach the two smaller ribbon cables. Next, attach the bigger ribbon cable by making sure that the black flap is up and then pushing it in. Make sure that the black line where you connect the ribbon cable lines up with the white line on the DS motherboard because if you don't then it will not connect correctly and your DS will not turn on. Once it's in all the way, push the black flap down to lock it in place. Next, attach the top screen ribbon cable by again pushing it into its connector and making sure that the black part lines up with the white line on the DS motherboard and then pushing down the black flap to lock it in place. Next, for the ribbon cable for the capture card, lay the capture board flat on the DS and push the ribbon cable into its connector and flip the black part down to lock it in. Next, take the paper off the adhesive backing from the board and stick it onto the CPU of the DS motherboard. When you do this, make sure that it lines up so it will fit inside of your shell so that the back can go on because if it's out too far, then the back will not go on. So make sure you have it in it far enough. If you make a mistake and the back shell will not close, carefully use your tweezers to pry between the capture card board and the CPU. Do not pull up just on the edges because the board is fragile and it could break. So use your tweezers to go between them and pry them apart. Once the board is lined up how you want it to be, put the back shell on and you can start screwing it in. If you have a controller mod installed, make sure that none of the wires from it are sticking out because you don't want them to get squished between the shells. Start by putting in the 7 Y-bit screws around the shell. Also, don't forget to put back the L and R triggers and their springs if you took them out. Then, take your battery and reinsert it back into the console, and take your Phillips head screw bit and screw back in the battery cover. Now that everything's finished, you can download the software I have linked in the description which will allow you to see your DS screens on your computer. All you have to do is launch the software and then attach your DS to your computer with a USB-A to USB-C cable. And now with that, you can capture high quality footage from your DS directly to your computer. If you want to capture your audio, all you have to do is use the aux cable through the headphone jack and plug it into the mic port on your computer. You can see here that I'm using my controller mod. A link on how to do that is down in the description if you want to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe. If you follow my tutorial on this, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know how it goes. I love to hear it. And with that, I hope you guys enjoy this and I will see you in the next video.